Chapter 361 The Jump So what do you think? I asked Brita who had a complicated expression on her face. I think it's stupid and risky dash, she said before pausing hesitantly. It's stupid and risky, but? I questioned again with a raised brow. Brita released a long sigh as she turned to me. What do you want me to say? Ether. I can't take responsibility for this, she said, her face turning serious as she continued. This is uncharted territory we are treading on. What you are suggesting is risky, it might work, but then again, it might not. I sighed as I turned to look at my brothers who were both looking at me expectantly. And what do you two think? I asked. Enos was the first to answer, he shrugged before speaking, his deep voice coming off almost nonchalant. I trust your judgment, brother, if you say we break the veil in this place, then that's what we shall do. I lightly shook my head. That wasn't what I wanted to hear. I wanted to hear his point of view. I wanted to hear another suggestion, and I didn't want the final decision-making to fall on me. Rita did not want to shoulder any of the responsibility and my siblings. It was my duty to do so on their behalf as the eldest. My eyes turned to Sidis. He seemed to understand something as he gazed deep into my eyes. He scanned our surroundings before he fixed his gaze back on me and spoke. I think you are forgetting something, brother. Oh, and what is that? I asked. We are all in this together. Whether we want to or not, the responsibility is equally divided between all of us, he said and turned to glare at Brita, whose frown deepened. She appeared like she wanted to argue or say something, but Sidis continued without pause. You suggested the plan, but none of us disagreed with it. We didn't give any better one. And so, if anything, we are responsible for its final outcome, he said. Sidis then broke his staring contest with Brita and glanced at Enos before his eyes finally settled on me. So, stop overthinking and doubting your decisions too much. It doesn't suit you, brother. Heh, a chuckle escaped my mouth as I playfully slapped Sidis's shoulder. Since when did you become so mature, you brat? Sidis shook his head with a rare genuine smile. Let's get out of this place, brother. Fine, let's leave the shithole. I turned to Brita, her demeanor showing traces of hesitation beneath the veneer of her usual stoicism. Brita, as before, you break the barrier, and I'll forge the connection to the cosmic mana, I declared, my tone resolute. I then shifted my gaze to Enos and Sidis, conveying the gravity of their roles in this endeavor. Your duty is to protect us from any interlopers or assailants attempting to breach the astral plane. Understand? Enos, ever eager for action, responded with an enthusiastic grin his eyes gleaming with excitement. You can count on us. We'll keep any of the bastards at bay. Sidis acknowledged the responsibility with a nod of somber understanding. His unwavering composure was a reassuring presence amidst the ethereal unknowns that enveloped us. With our roles established, I focused on the task at hand. Brita took her position, her hands emitting a subtle glow as she prepared to summon her spear and unleash her formidable power. I extended my consciousness ready to reach out to the cosmic mana that resided beyond the astral plane. Ready? I asked, my gaze sweeping across my siblings, gauging their resolve. Ready? Enos affirmed, brimming with adrenaline-fueled excitement, while Sidis assumed a poised stance, an enigmatic veil of darkness enveloping him, ready to shield us from potential threats. Then, Brita, go ahead. I directed, and without hesitation, the goddess summoned her luminous spear, its brilliance illuminating the astral expanse. As her aura surged, its power rippled through the surroundings, influencing the very fabric of the astral realm. Brita's focus was unwavering as she unleashed one of her most potent attacks, creating a minuscule fissure in the ethereal veil. The crack she fashioned offered us a glimpse into the realm beyond, a fleeting glimpse of the boundless darkness that lay in wait. Though the opening was modest, it was more than enough for me to establish a link with the cosmic man on the outside. Before I could, however, an oppressive aura descended upon us from the unknown, signaling that a shade had detected our presence. The speed and accuracy of their response left me puzzled, but now was not the time to dwell on such matters. In a heartbeat, Eno sprang into action, his battle instincts driving him to confront the encroaching darkness head-on. With a fierce charge, he clashed with the ominous fog, hiding the king knows what, and pushing it back with all his might. The violent clash shook the opening in the veil, threatening to close it, but Enos's determination bought us a crucial split second. Without hesitation, Sidis followed suit, employing his darkness mana to form a protective shield against the malevolent forces attempting to invade our realm. The shield shimmered with an eerie darkness, holding back the encroaching monstrosity and safeguarding our path. I could feel the weight of the cosmic energy within my soul space, eager to break free, 
but we needed a stable connection to traverse the veil successfully. I took the cue and began to channel my energy. I extended my consciousness into the realm beyond the veil, reaching for the cosmic mana that surged within the vast tapestry of existence. The link between the cosmic mana inside my soul space and that of the cosmic energies out there strengthened, and the veil grew more permeable, beckoning me to embrace the realm beyond the astral plane. Brother, Sidus's nervous voice cried out. The cosmic energy surged within me as I embraced my three-headed dragon form, an embodiment of raw power. My connection to the cosmic mana intensified, filling me with a renewed strength. With a resounding roar, I seized Brita with my tail, knowing there was no time for delicacy. My focus was solely on ensuring we crossed the threshold into the astral realm. With unyielding determination, I swiftly gathered Enos and grasped Sidus in my powerful claws. Time was slipping away, the veil threatening to seal shut. I had to act quickly. There was no more room for hesitation. With a surge of energy, I propelled us forward and made the jump. Chapter 362 Where? The teleportation process was a chaotic whirlwind of sensations, leaving me disoriented and breathless. It felt as if my very essence was being stretched and contorted, an uncomfortable dance with the fabric of reality. My grip tightened around my siblings and Brita, drawing them closer to me as we traversed the realms. In that timeless moment, I sensed an ephemeral darkness attempting to ensnare us. The aura of the malevolent shade sought to lock onto our presence, but it faltered against the resilience of the cosmic mana. As far as I knew, teleportation was a realm untouched by such bastards, beyond their capabilities. As the veil between dimensions undulated around us, I struggled to maintain my focus and resolve. The shifting boundaries threatened to shatter our cohesion, but I continued to hold steadfast. I willed myself to remain vigilant, ensuring that no sinister force would pry us apart, although I didn't have much I could do if they really had the power to do so. In the midst of this ethereal journey, there was a fleeting moment where my consciousness seemed to slip away, only to be abruptly restored. The experience was unnerving but I could not afford to succumb to fear. We were inching closer to our destination, whatever it may be. After what seemed like an eternity, or perhaps merely a few seconds, we emerged in the vast expanse of darkness from our transcendental journey, re-entering the tangible world with the guiding power of the cosmic mana. Our surroundings were an obsidian canvas, adorned with the distant twinkle of stars, their faint glow beckoning us from unimaginable distances. I gently released my grip on my siblings and Brita, allowing them to float weightlessly, their forms adrift in a space both beautiful and forbidding. The infinite cosmos surrounded us, an awe-inspiring sight that evoked both curiosity and trepidation. Brita's voice reverberated in my mind, its familiar presence soothing amidst the cosmic stillness. Where are we? She asked, as my transformation receded. I shifted back to my normal body, my three dragon heads dissolving into the fabric of my being. My form gradually shrank, returning to its familiar size as we adjusted to this ethereal realm. I don't know. I replied. Amidst the celestial silence, uncertainty gripped our hearts as we floated in this unfamiliar realm. I don't see no planets, Enos's voice chimed in. Only those faraway stars, and who knows how long it would take us to reach them. Enos's pragmatic observation resonated with a sense of dawning vastness. The distant stars only taunting us with their unreachable glow. We were like specks in the cosmic tapestry, insignificant amidst the grandeur of the universe. It's quiet, eerily quiet, I replied, my unease palpable. A foreboding sensation washed over me, as if something was amiss, and the tips of my scales seemed to stand on end. Brita attempted to find a glimmer of hope. Perhaps we left the battlefield behind, and we are closer to our home territory? Her optimism was admirable, but I couldn't shake off the feeling that our location might be far from any familiar realm. Or, we accidentally teleported behind enemy lines instead. Citus's blunt statement pierced through the silence, reminding us of a grim possibility. He raised a valid concern that our unplanned teleportation might have gone wrong. The worst part was, there was no way of telling if he was right, at least not immediately. The reality of our situation weighed heavily upon us, and we all shared a common sentiment, uncertainty, as we looked around the boundless expanse of space. Just as I was racking my brain over what next step we should take, Citus's quick thinking saved us from immediate danger. In a seamless transition, he shrouded himself in the shadows, his dark mana extending to enfold us in its grasp. Brita's instinct to unleash her divine aura was evident, but she restrained herself, realizing that staying hidden was our best chance of survival. A wordless understanding passed between us as we let ourselves be enveloped by the darkness, 
our forms blending seamlessly with the void of space. Our auras were concealed behind this newfound veil, shielding us from the prying eyes of any lurking danger. The silence was heavy, broken only by the thudding of my heart in my chest. We remained motionless, our breath steady and cautious. Sidis, like a shadow in the night, moved with utmost stealth and guided Enos and Brita towards me. He held Enos's tail, while Brita found herself secured in one of his claws, and together, they floated toward my waiting form. As the moments ticked by, the anticipation in the air grew palpable, and our senses heightened, picking up on the approaching presence. Each of us could feel the ripples of malevolence and dread that emanated from them. It was a haunting sensation, one that sent shivers down our spines and seemed to gnaw at the edges of our consciousness. The instinct to flee clawed at me relentlessly, urging me to take flight and escape the approaching danger. Yet, I resisted, knowing deep down that there was no outrunning whatever sinister force was drawing nearer. Brita and my siblings mirrored my unease, their expressions reflecting a mixture of fear and determination. The silence that once comforted us now felt like an oppressive weight, bearing down on us as we awaited the approaching entities. The shadows seemed to thicken around us, and the darkness itself seemed to come alive with hidden dangers. As the unknown neared, we steeled ourselves, our hearts resolute even as our unease grew. It would have been almost impossible to make out their appearances as they approached if not for the overwhelming aura they were exuding. I squinted my eyes and tried to see them better. The three shadowy figures leading the way were a haunting sight, their forms shrouded in an ever-swirling dark fog, obscuring their true appearances. They seemed to effortlessly shift between humanoid and beast-like forms, their silhouettes contorting and twisting in an unsettling dance. Their presence alone sent shivers down my spine, each movement emanating malevolence and darkness. Yet, it was the fourth shade that truly captured my attention and sent a chill down my spine. He seemed to stand out from the rest, his aura more restrained, and his appearance surprisingly unassuming. At first glance, he resembled a middle-aged human, but his skin was an unnatural obsidian hue, and his eyes, completely black with no discernible irises, stared hauntingly into the abyss. The aura he exuded was suffocating, and my instinct screamed at me to be on guard. He seemed to exude a sense of calm, but beneath the surface lurked an unfathomable darkness. I couldn't help but feel a deep sense of unease as if his very presence threatened to devour our souls. What the hell is that? I inwardly cursed. Chapter 363 Behind Enemy Lines As the shades began searching the vast darkness, it became apparent that they were on a mission to find something or someone. My heart pounded loudly in my chest, and the tension in the air was palpable. I knew with a sinking feeling that they had indeed sensed our presence and were actively hunting for us. With trepidation, we drew close together, seeking safety within the confines of Sidus's darkness magic. The swirling shadows masked our presence and veiled our auras from prying eyes. We remained as still as possible, fearing any sudden movement might betray us to these ominous intruders. The three leading shadowy shades were menacing but still manageable. It was their human-looking leader who truly sent shivers down my spine. His presence felt suffocating, and my instincts warned me that he was far beyond our capabilities to handle. The sense of dread was overwhelming, and I knew we stood no chance against him. As I looked around at my siblings and Brita, I felt a deep sense of responsibility to protect them, to shield them from this impending threat. Yet, even with my cosmic mana, I couldn't help but doubt if it would be enough to face this enigmatic shade. His aura exuded power and darkness, and it seemed as if his very existence defied the laws of nature. All we could do was huddle together, hidden within the shadows, and hope against hope that we could remain undetected. My scales tingled with unease, and a heavy weight settled in my chest, knowing that our lives hung in the balance, and the outcome was far from certain. Just as I was praying to the king, their leader suddenly spoke. Hmm, it seems like some rats have made their way to us. The leader of the shade spoke with a voice that carried an unsettling resonance as if it echoed from the darkest depths of the void. His words cut through the silence of space, and I couldn't help but feel exposed, as though he could see right through our concealment. My heart pounded in my chest, and my scales bristled in alarm. The realization that he might have detected us sent a chill down my spine. I exchanged glances with Enos and Brita, their tension evident, but I noticed that Sidis remained motionless, his dark mana spell still swirling protectively around us. I hesitated, torn between my instinct to flee and my trust in Sidis's abilities to keep us hidden. My eyes flickered between my little brother and the menacing shade, who floated ominously in the distance. For a moment, I considered taking action, but I decided to hold my ground and trust in Sidis's judgment. The leader's words lingered in the air like a haunting echo, 
and I braced myself for whatever might come next. The weight of uncertainty and the fear of what he could do weighed heavily on me. In the cosmic silence, we remained suspended, waiting for the inevitable confrontation. Time seemed to stretch, and the darkness felt oppressive as we awaited our fate in this perilous encounter. Interesting, seems like the little rats have some skill, the shade leader remarked, his voice dripping with a mix of amusement and disdain. Without warning, he made a swift gesture, directing a wave of abyssal darkness downward, in the opposite direction to ours. The sheer force of his attack caused the darkness of space itself to tremble, as if cowering in fear. The suddenness of the assault caught us off guard, and we had no time to react. The darkness surged out from his hand, expanding rapidly and threatening to engulf everything in its path. It devoured the space around it, leaving us vulnerable and exposed. In those tense moments, I felt the oppressive weight of the darkness closing in, suffocating us with its malevolence. Just as quickly as it had begun, the shade retracted the darkness back to his palm, a perplexed expression crossing his shadowy features. Strange, have they left already? He muttered, his gaze scanning the surroundings, his eyes grazing our direction. I quickly averted my eyes, not daring to meet his piercing gaze. We held our breaths, waiting in trepidation for his next move. After an agonizing pause, the shade finally withdrew his gaze and turned to address his three shadowy followers, there should be three of them and one divine. They shouldn't be far from here, but it seems like they have some method of hiding themselves. Find them. His followers nodded, their formless shapes seemingly acknowledging his command. With a sense of purpose, they dispersed in different directions, their dark fog trailing behind them like haunting wisps of smoke. I clung to the hope that Sidus's darkness mana would continue to shield us from their senses, but the lingering fear of being discovered gnawed at my heart. We remained motionless, surrounded by the enigmatic darkness of space, unsure of what would come next. The Shade Leader's departure brought a sense of relief, but the tension lingered thick in the air. We remained frozen in place, hesitant to move even as his shadowy followers continued their search. My gaze shifted between Enos and Brita, both of whom looked equally wary. Approaching Sidus, I intended to offer some words of reassurance or comfort, but my voice caught in my throat as I caught sight of his face. He had finally healed his blinded eye, but kept the scar. His bloodshot gaze was fixed on the direction the shade had vanished, and I felt a pang of helplessness surge through me. Blood trickled from both his eyes and mouth, a haunting image of the toll the previous encounter had taken on him. I wanted to reach out, to say something, anything to soothe his pain, but the words eluded me. Instead, I settled for gently placing my tail on his shoulder, offering silent support. Sidus had shown great strength and resilience, but even he had his limits. As his older brother, I would do whatever it took to protect him. Silently, we remained in our cloaked state, waiting for the opportune moment to move. By now, it was obvious that the place we had teleported to held many dangers, and we could not afford to make any missteps. We were without a doubt, behind enemy lines, and I could only hope that we would find a way back home and put an end to this nightmarish journey. Chapter 364 Behind Enemy Lines 2 What do we do? Sidus will not be able to hold on any longer. He knows his bloodshot eyes bore into mine, a reflection of his mounting anxiety. He was right, Sidus's condition was deteriorating rapidly, and we couldn't afford to linger here much longer. His plea for guidance was mirrored in his desperate gaze, and though I wanted to provide answers, my mind felt like a void, devoid of solutions. I felt the weight of their expectations pressing down on me, a heavy responsibility that threatened to overwhelm. I struggled to collect my thoughts, my eyes darting around in search of a plan, any glimmer of hope. But the well of inspiration remained dry, and I could feel panic clawing at the edges of my composure. I couldn't show weakness, not now. They were looking to me for guidance, for a way out of this dire situation. As I wrestled with my own uncertainties, Brita's voice cut through the turmoil. Her words were sharp a stark reminder that we were running out of time. She floated toward me, her expression stern and resolute. The weight of her gaze was unyielding, her urgency pushing me to shake off the paralyzing thoughts that had gripped me. Snap out of it, you damn lizard. Her words were a jolt, a call to action that I sorely needed. This is not the time for you to be lost in your thoughts. If that thing finds us, we won't survive. Her words were a wake-up call, a resounding reminder of the imminent danger we faced. I straightened my posture pushing aside the mental fog that had clouded my judgment. Brita was right. We needed to act, and we needed to do so swiftly. Gathering my resolve, I locked eyes with her, the fire of determination reigniting within me. You're right, I affirmed, my voice steady and resolute. Redirecting my focus to Sidus, 
I tapped into the wellspring of water mana within my soul space, summoning a healing bubble that enveloped him. The surprise in Sidis's eyes was evident, his features gradually regaining their vitality as the healing magic worked its mending touch. His voice wavered slightly as he found his words, gratitude mingling with relief. I can't release the spell. Whatever that thing was, it'll find us the moment I do. I can feel it. My response was swift, my resolve unwavering. Can you maintain it while we move? Citus's determination flickered in his eyes, his voice firm. As long as we don't draw attention to ourselves, I should be able to keep it up. Good, I acknowledged, urgency pushing my words to a rapid pace. My attention shifted to the rest of the group, each member of our makeshift team an integral piece of our survival. Enos, stand by Citus and support him. Brita, stay close to me. We need to find a secure location where I can attempt to teleport us once more. Curse it all, you, and this damn teleportation. Brita's words carried a mixture of frustration and reluctant agreement. Without further delay, we embarked on our journey, soaring through the expansive void of space. Sidis lay upon Enos's back, the two of them flying in formation to my right, while Brita maintained a parallel course to my left. My draconic transformation remained dormant, an option too risky given the possibility of Sidis being unable to mask the energetic fluctuations it would cause. Instead, we relied on swift and soundless flight as our strategy, our very survival hinged on maintaining the utmost stealth and vigilance in the face of our relentless pursuers. Across a distant, desolate battlefield, an immense ancient red dragon surged through the void, his colossal wings propelling him toward a desecrated planet. Amid the vastness of space floated the lifeless forms of innumerable obsidian shade behemoths, a testament to the devastating wrath he had unleashed. His eyes blazed with an all-consuming fury as he approached his destination, a planet ravaged by the horrors he had wrought. Before him, a formation of smaller dragons materialized their presence a stark contrast to his overwhelming figure. Among them, a hornless dragon of earthy brown hue emerged as their leader. Have you located them? The words that emanated from the red dragon's maw were laced with a barely contained rage, his aura pulsating with an intense, fiery energy. The assembly of dragons quivered before him, heads bowed in deference to his formidable presence. The brown dragon hesitated briefly, then spoke with a tremor in his voice, and not yet. The pantheon within Everwind continues to wage a desperate battle, but our scouts have yet to discern any trace of the young heirs. The brown dragon paused for a second before continuing, we believe they have already escaped. With a profound exhalation, the colossal red dragon allowed his rampant energy to ebb, his once fiery demeanor giving way to an eerie tranquility that seemed to emanate from the very depths of his being. His piercing gaze shut as he communed with the forces that coursed within him, mastering the tempest of his emotions. When his eyes reopened, a chilling calmness had settled in their depths. Deploy the chronicles, his voice, now under control, resonated like thunderclaps across the expanse. The authority in his tone brooked no dissent. Should the little brats yet linger within the heart of that chaos, rest them back from there. If not, find out the threads of their flight and unveil the path they took. We are at your service, great destroyer. The brown-scaled dragon intoned with reverence, the other dragons in tow echoing his obeisance. Then, as one, they executed a coordinated pivot and took flight, vanishing into the void with a sense of purpose. Left alone in the cosmic silence, the colossal red dragon shifted his gaze to the vast starlit tapestry that sprawled before him. A moment of solitude unfolded, and his rumbling voice carried his thoughts into the emptiness. Stay alive, you brats. May the king watch over you, and your light persevere. Rita's voice brimmed with determination, each word ringing with the weight of her convictions. We cannot venture there. It is a barren husk of a world, devoid of life or vitality. Yet, I shook my head my resolute gaze meeting hers. Despite its desolation, lingering threads of mana persist. It may be feeble, but it is enough for us to rejuvenate. Brita's frustration was palpable, her brows knitted in a mixture of exasperation and concern. I was still okay, my soul space was enough to support me through more than this, but Eno's was not, and although he did not want to admit it, I could see it as clear as day. Eno's protest echoed across the space, his voice infused with youthful bravado. I assure you, I can still press on. A sigh escaped me, tinged with the weight of responsibility. No, we will land and replenish our strength, Enos. There is no room for debate in this matter. Chapter 365, Behind Enemy Lines 3 Following my decision, our group moved in unity, veiled by Sidis's magic. With each passing moment, anticipation coiled tighter around us as we breached the planet's atmosphere. 
Every heartbeat echoed in the tense stillness, a collective hope for a safe landing. Luck favored us this time, the cruel whims of fate momentarily subdued. As we approached a desolate patch of land, our vigilance remained unwavering, our senses attuned to the faint traces of the various presences scattered across the barren terrain. None rivaled the menacing power we had encountered amidst the stars, granting us a fleeting reprieve from the threat that lurked beyond. Our eyes were watchful, our movements cautious, aware that this fragile peace could be shattered in an instant. The barren landscape offered us concealment, a haven amidst the void, and we embraced it with a mixture of hope and apprehension. A desolation reigned over the planet's surface, a bleak testimony to the ravages of time and that of the shades. The pulse of life had long since fled, leaving behind a barren canvas where only remnants of mana clung to the fading echoes of existence. Earth mana, bereft of its once vibrant vitality, lingered as a spectral memory. Amongst the subdued elements, flickers of fire mana blazed an ember of the planet's former energy. Tainted wind mana whispered through the stagnant air, a ghostly reminder of the winds that once danced across this forlorn landscape. Water mana, however, remained conspicuously absent, a vacant void that mirrored the emptiness of the terrain. Still, our purpose wasn't bound to the presence of water mana. It was Eno's I hoped to restore. It was his vitality and strength that mattered the most. I was still okay. The mana inside my soul space was more than enough to support me through more than what we had been through. Amidst the desolate landscape, we ventured into a desolate vale, wedged between towering mountains that bore the scars of some ancient cataclysm. A cautious dance of reconnaissance marked our initial approach. We circled around the area to ensure our isolation in this desolation. Only after confirming the absence of prying eyes or lurking threats did we dare to descend, our steps cautious and senses alert. In the sheltered embrace of the valley shadow, Enos harnessed his mastery over the earth mana, sculpting a cavern into the side of the charred mountain. His practiced claws carved the stone with a precision born from experience, fashioning a refuge from the unknown terrain. Brita followed closely behind. While I remained vigilant, my senses attuned to the surroundings. Sidis, ever so cautious, began to weave a new spell to veil our presence, shrouding the entire cavern in a shadowy magic. Only once he had secured our concealment did he join the rest of us within the newfound sanctuary. Within the dim recesses of the cave, our wearied forms found respite. Sidis's weariness was palpable, his body and spirit strained by the taxing task he had undertaken. He walked in with a sigh that seemed to carry the weight of his exertions, and I released the water bubble spell that had been providing him with a constant stream of healing energy. I then approached him tentatively, my concern masking a hint of relief. Are you all right? The words left my lips, their tone a blend of worry and curiosity. Sidis's response came in the form of a weary nod, his gaze meeting mine with a measure of reassurance. I've placed a spell around the cave entrance to mask our presence, he explained, his voice carrying a touch of fatigue. As long as we remain discreet, we should go unnoticed. Acknowledging his effort, I offered a soft but appreciative smile. You've done well, Sidis. Take some time to rest now. My claw came to rest on his shoulder, a gentle tap that conveyed not only my pride in his efforts but also my genuine concern for his well-being. With a glance toward Enos, I witnessed his fatigue catch up with him as he sank to the ground. His eyes slid shut, and an intricate dance of earth mana unfolded around him. No words were needed to communicate the silent understanding between us. He knew, just as well as I did, the importance of maintaining a cautious balance and drawing mana from the environment, especially in the presence of lurking threats. Enos's controlled efforts to replenish his soul space were a testament to his acute awareness and the lessons he had learned. Meanwhile, Brita's demeanor remained as inscrutable as ever, a mask of indifference concealing her emotions. Her divine spear materialized, though its gleam was notably absent this time. Her hands moved deftly, the artifact a focal point for her concentration. The subtle tension etched across her features, a testament to her internal struggles, despite her best efforts to cloak them. In this quiet cave, a delicate dance of preparation unfolded as we gathered our strength and resources, each of us grappling with our own uncertainties and fears. It was Brita who finally shattered the hushed stillness, her gaze lifting to meet mine in a rare moment of vulnerability. Her voice, though steady, carried the weight of her admission. I hate to admit it, but our best chance of escape is if you teleport us once more. My response was a solemn shake of my head. The proximity of the nearest recognizable location is unknown, I admitted, my brow furrowing with the weight of uncertainty. A hasty teleportation could result in us getting stuck in the astral plane once again. I paused for a second before continuing, or maybe even worse. 
The cavern's shadows seemed to deepen around us, mirroring the gravity of our discussion. Worse? Worse than this? Brita asked in a sarcastic tone. We are already deep inside the bastard's territory. How worse could it get? Don't. Damn it. You just had to go and jinx it, I cursed. Brita rolled her eyes at that before she answered. A little bit too late for that. Don't you think? A sigh involuntarily slipped past my lips, an audible echo of the responsibility pressing down on me. Just as the silence seemed to settle back in, Enos, who had maintained his silence with closed eyes, finally spoke up, his voice carrying an air of pragmatism, brother, the goddess's assessment holds truth. While blind teleportation into the unknown carries risks, it's evident that the four of us can navigate the astral plane together without major issues, if we were to fall there again. It's not only the astral realm that I fear. I whispered under my breath. Chapter 366, Pride. What was that, brother? Enos asked. Enos's quizzical inquiry drew a heavy breath from me, laden with the weight of my thoughts. Reluctantly, I began to unravel the complex web of concerns that had been swirling within me. It's not solely the astral plane that I am concerned about. Perplexed, Enos's head inclined slightly as he sought understanding. Then what is it? If you can teleport us away from danger so swiftly, what's the issue? I met his confusion with a somber look. My tone grave, teleportation, despite its apparent speed, isn't instantaneous. It requires a brief but tangible span of time to take effect. What if we materialize in the midst of a threat before I can act? What if, in that crucial moment, someone or something interferes with our teleportation, leaving us stranded in a realm of uncertainty, neither in this realm nor in the astral plane? As my words hung in the air, both Brita and Siddha shifted their attention to me, their eyes reflecting a mix of curiosity and concern. I continued, my voice steady but serious, I have confidence in my ability to transport us to familiar ground, a place I've experienced when I have a certain idea of the distance at least. Yet, in a scenario like this, the variables multiply and the risks intensify. If it were just me, perhaps I could make that gamble. But you are all under my care, my responsibility. A weighty hush enveloped the cave, the air thick with contemplation as my companions processed my words. Unexpectedly, it was Brita who shattered the silence, her features etched with a deep frown that mirrored her inner turmoil. Aren't you being too arrogant? She challenged. My brows furrowed in genuine confusion, arrogant? How do you mean? You speak of responsibility as if we're helpless souls under your watch, but who exactly decided that? Her words were sharp, cutting through the air. Ah, I, I opened my mouth to respond, but Brita swiftly cut me off, her voice carrying a tone of irony, Ether, you might need a reminder. Despite your towering ego, I'm older than you, surprising as that might be. She said, her voice dripping with sarcasm before she continued, I'm not subservient to your care. You need to rid yourself of that ingrained arrogance. I've been by your side because it was the pragmatic choice, and for our friendship, she hesitated as she spoke the last part. Brita then took a deep breath and spoke again, not because I seek your guardianship. I'll spell it out clearly. None of us are seeking your assumed responsibility. Decisions are communal, challenges are collective. Her gaze encompassed all of us as her words reverberated in the cave, her hand gesturing inclusively towards Sidis and Enos. I'm sure I speak for those two as well, though they might not have the courage to say it to your face, I could care less. We don't need a leader who shoulders a burden without being asked. We are all equals, facing these trials together. Brita's words hung in the air, a challenge that struck a chord deep within me. I cast a sidelong glance at my siblings, a glimmer of hope lingering in the corner of my eye, anticipating a swift denial or a counterargument. But my heart sank as both Sidis and Enos averted their gazes awkwardly their silent speaking volumes. It was then that realization slowly dawned upon me. Siblings or not, at the end of the day they were dragons, fiercely independent beings with their own pride. Despite our shared blood, the concept of bowing beneath the shadow of another, even a sibling, went against their very nature. Their downcast eyes told me that they weren't seeking my protective embrace, nor were they asking me to carry their burdens. Ah, I finally exhaled softly, the understanding settling in. This was a moment of reckoning, an unspoken recognition that we were equals on this tumultuous journey. Despite my role as an older brother, the dynamic was shifting. In this harsh realm, pride and autonomy were paramount, even among family. I understand. I responded quietly, my voice holding a touch of resignation. In truth, I yearned for rescue from the tension that now hung heavy in the air. Lying down, I shut my eyes, feigning restfulness while my thoughts swirled tumultuously. Brita emitted a soft huff 
her annoyance palpable, and she returned her focus to her spear. The once precious relic seemed to have transformed into a simple diversion, a way to occupy her hands and mind. Meanwhile, Sidis and Enos exchanged uncertain glances, a silent acknowledgement of the newfound uncertainty that had settled among us. Keep replenishing your mana. Sidis's voice slipped through the quiet, his words a gentle directive. Enos followed suit, shutting his eyes and allowing the flow of uncorrupted mana to sustain him. The rhythm of their actions provided a semblance of normalcy amidst the weight of unspoken words. The uncomfortable atmosphere persisted for several days, an unspoken tension that seemed to weave itself into the very fabric of the cave. We remained in our respective corners, each lost in our own thoughts, a shared silence enveloping us. Brita remained anchored to her spot, her fingers endlessly fidgeting with the hilt of her spear. The weapon had become a mere distraction, a focus for her unease. Meanwhile, Sidis would intermittently rise from his place and venture to the cave's entrance, his gaze fixed on the barrier he had cast to conceal us. No words passed between us, the weight of unexpressed emotions almost tangible in the air. We were like four strangers, united by circumstance yet divided by unspoken conflicts. I'm ready to continue. Enos's voice finally broke the silence, his body stretching as if eager to be back on the move. Beside him, Sidis rose as well, announcing, My spell is nearly at its limit. Their eyes then turned to Brita and me, a flicker of uncertainty in their glances as they shifted between us. Brita was the one to break the tension, her voice carrying a touch of sarcasm. Well, it's about damn time. She then turned to me and asked, Are we ready to move? A soft chuckle escaped my lips as I nodded, dispelling the lingering awkwardness. No need to tread so lightly. I'm ready. Let's go. Chapter 367 The Escape I'm afraid I won't be able to mask the teleportation fluctuations, Sidis admitted as we walked toward the cave's exit. I shook my head, a determined smile on my face, doesn't matter. As you all pointed out, it's a risk we're all willing to take, I replied with a casual shrug. Brita's eyebrows knitted in a frown, her tone tinged with sarcasm, still not over my little speech, are you? Not in the slightest, I retorted with a mock huff, which earned me an eye roll from Brita. Rest assured, brother. We're getting out of this shitty place, Enos chimed in, his voice carrying genuine determination. Do you have a specific destination in mind for the teleportation? Citizen inquired. I nodded, my reply carrying a hint of secrecy. Yeah, I've got one. My thoughts drifted to the floating island, where the grand teleportation gate stood, guarded by an army of dragons and the majestic silver eastern dragon. Brita shot me a glance but refrained from saying anything, while Enos's eyes lit up in excitement as he spoke. Great. Then let us get to it. I nodded and turned to Sidis before I spoke. Open it. Sidis wordlessly conjured yet another spell to envelop us, gently retracting the one that shrouded our temporary shelter. The desolate valley stretched out before us, and we stepped out hesitantly into the open. Forming a loose formation, I stood at the center, flanked by Sidis and Enos on my right while Brita took her place on my left. All right, let's do this. Remember, we only have a limited window, I muttered, more to myself than anyone else, the weight of the situation pressing on my mind. With a deliberate breath, I motioned for my companions to draw closer. Sidis and Enos shuffled nearer, aligning themselves with my claw, while Brita positioned herself close to my back. Ignoring the subtle tension that had risen, I delved deep into the recesses of my soul space, stirring the cosmic mana that resided within the essence of my dragon statue. The transformation began, my body expanding, and two additional heads emerged from my shoulders. The surges of cosmic energy pulsed, the once-concealed fluctuations now harder for Sidis to mask. Sure enough, his concealment spell eventually faltered, dissolving in response to the potent cosmic forces. The moment Sidis's masking spell faltered, the atmosphere erupted into chaos. A cacophony of deafening roars reverberated from all directions, announcing our presence to the lurking threats that had remained concealed. The very planet seemed to shudder under the weight of their collective aggression. From the shadows of the desolate landscape, the myriad hidden beings emerged, drawn by the unmistakable aura of three dragons and a formidable goddess. It was an unintentional proclamation of our intrusion, a call to arms that could not go unanswered. Citus's unease manifested in the form of a swirling dark spell coiled around his claws like a protective serpent. Enos, seemingly invigorated by the impending confrontation, bore a savage grin that hinted at the impending clash, his tongue flickering over his teeth in anticipation. Rita, as composed as ever, adopted a defensive stance, her fingers tracing subtle patterns along the surface of her spear, 
the weapon she held ready with practiced confidence. Our readiness and resolve now pitted against the encroaching danger. Undeterred by the mounting threats, I refused to waste a single moment. My transformation completed. I tapped into the abundant cosmic mana coursing through my veins and our surroundings, the wellspring of power resonating within me. With unwavering focus, the vivid image of my intended destination materialized in my mind, a beacon guiding my teleportation. Without pause, I gathered Sidis and Enos protectively within the grasp of my powerful claws. Rita's swift movement showcased her battle-honed instincts as she seamlessly leaped onto my back, fingers gripping my scales with an iron resolve. Her divine spear vanished into the void, a concealed guardian ready to be unleashed at a moment's notice. The weight of my companions settled around me, a united force ready to take the plunge into the unknown. Summoning a final profound inhalation, we embarked on our perilous journey. A sinuous strand of cosmic mana cascaded from the distant stars, cocooning us in its ethereal mantle. Our very beings seemed to elongate and stretch, transcending the confines of our known reality. The vibrancy of colors dulled as we hurtled through the enigmatic fabric of space, suspended in a state of suspended animation. Amidst this tumultuous transition, my foremost concern was for my fellow travelers. My grasp on Sidis and Enos tightened, an unyielding promise to safeguard them through this cosmic upheaval. Rita, ever the resolute warrior, needed no assistance, her grip upon my back unyielding, her tenacity mirroring the stark determination etched upon her countenance. The transition flowed seamlessly this time, depositing us within the boundless obscurity of the cosmic void. My eyes blinked in rapid succession, sweeping our surroundings with eager anticipation, but the expected destination remained elusive. Fuck. I cursed under my breath, frustration threading through my words. A quick glance toward my comrades, and I relayed the situation with a determined resolve. Hold on. We still haven't arrived yet. Just go damn it. No need to say anything. Rita's voice, laden with impatience, echoed from my back, her tone an urgent reminder that action superseded words. Instinctively, I extended my consciousness toward the cosmic wellspring, summoning another thread to weave our escape. But in that fleeting moment, a tremor ran through Sidis, his emotions transmuting into raw horror. Panic gripped me as I desperately sought the source of his distress. Damn it. Is it that bastard? Did he find us already? My mind raced, the urgency of the situation propelling me into swift action. Activating the teleportation, I propelled us away from that uncertain realm, my fear fueling the leap through space. Moments after their abrupt departure, a humanoid shade darted to the very spot they had vanished from, his malevolent gaze sweeping the surroundings. Sinister energy emanated from his form as a twisted smile curled upon his lips, accompanied by a chilling chuckle that reverberated through the air. Well, well, well? Two pillars of existence and a goddess straying so far away from home. How exciting. In an instant, the fabric of space seemed to bend as three shadowy entities materialized beside him. The middle-aged looking shade fixed his gaze upon the newcomers, his silent scrutiny betraying his thoughts. After a few contemplative moments, he finally shook his head, his voice dripping with an air of finality. No, your interference would be in vain. Restlessness rippled through the shadowy figures beside him, their forms shifting uneasily, an evident difference of opinion amongst them. The humanoid shade's fingers curled in the air, conjuring a void of unsettling darkness that eagerly consumed one of the dissenting shadows, its presence vanishing with an unsettling hush. The remaining two entities seemed to quell their objections, their unease now subdued. Any other objections? The leader's tone was firm, his dominance unquestionable. The entity's movement stilled, and their silence signified their compliance. With a calculated glance toward the horizon, the leader's lips moved in an almost inaudible whisper, those little ones belong to me. Chapter 368 Head On Our abrupt re-entry into the vast void of space was disorienting, the familiar stars absent from our view. Urgency gripped my heart as I rapidly surveyed our surroundings, my mind racing to connect with the cosmic mana once again. The ethereal thread descended promptly, interweaving with my intentions. Brother, hurry. Amidst this tense moment, Sidis's voice pierced the air with an edge of desperation, urging me to act swiftly. The lingering currents of his anxiety and dread were palpable, intertwining with my own unease. A chilling realization crept over me, its weight heavy as lead. The relentless pursuer was closing in, a harbinger of imminent danger. The relentless pursuit persisted, an unsettling game of cosmic cat and mouse. My attempts at evasion were thwarted, each teleportation seemingly anticipated by the persistent bastard that trailed us. 
frustration mingled with trepidation as I grappled with the enigma of our pursuer's uncanny ability to locate us across the vast expanse. Doubt and anxiety gnawed at the edges of my mind, shrouding my thoughts with a growing unease. Was this shade deliberately interfering with our teleportation? Were we mere pawns in some insidious design? My attempts to outweed our pursuer felt like futile gestures, no matter how I attempted to change the teleportation's coordinates, leaving me questioning the very fabric of our escape strategy. The missing stars only added to the surreal sense of disorientation, amplifying the suffocating weight of the unknown. With the way things were going, it was only a matter of time before my energy ran out and we were caught. Rita and the others seemed to have sensed that, their growing anxiety evident in their features. After another teleportation into what looked to be the same starless space, Sidis suddenly spoke, We need to fight. Yes, brother, even I am starting to feel the bastard's presence closing in on us. Enos chimed in. The tension was palpable, and the urgency in my siblings' voices mirrored the growing dread within me. Their pleas to stand and fight echoed in the hollow expanse, resonating with their deep-seated anxiety. Yet despite their words, I remained steadfast in my conviction that a direct confrontation with the Shade would be our downfall. And so I ignored their suggestions, and swiftly initiated another teleportation, desperation fueling my actions. As we materialized in yet another starless void, I could sense the palpable frustration radiating from Sidis and Enos. The growing realization that our evasive maneuvers were proving futile cast a suffocating cloud over our hopes of escape. Ether, they are right. We have no choice. Brita's voice held an edge of urgency as she pressed her point, aligning with the growing consensus among my companions. Despite their collective plea for action, my resolve remained unyielding. As their words reverberated in the air, I clenched my claws, my mind racing to find an alternative, an escape from this inescapable pursuit. I quickly shook my head and answered, We will die. That's not a normal shade. Before I initiated another teleportation. Brita retorted as soon as we stepped out of the teleportation once more, normal shade or not, we have no choice. I was about to teleport us once more when in the blink of an eye, danger had materialized once more. Dodge. Citus's urgent warning acted as a catalyst, propelling my body into a swift evasive maneuver, narrowly dodging the malevolent darkness that obliterated the space we had just occupied. The sheer force of the attack sent ripples through the void, its abyssal nature a grim testament to the power behind it. Reacting instinctively, my dragon form unleashed a torrent of destructive energy from each of my three heads, the combined breath attack cutting through the darkness with searing brilliance. But the shade was not to be underestimated. With a mere gesture, he summoned an impenetrable shield of his own dark power, effortlessly thwarting my assault and swallowing it without leaving a trace. Tension crackled in the air as my companions and I were brought face to face with an unimaginable foe, our fight for survival spiraling into a dire confrontation. I finally caught you. You sure can run fast, but are you tired already? It was just getting fun. The malevolent presence before us radiated an unsettling confidence as the shade's chilling chuckle reverberated through the dark expanse. His taunting words slithered into my ears, a venomous reminder of our vulnerability. My fury surged, a fierce counterpoint to the fear that threatened to take hold. In the midst of this perilous encounter, I realized there was no escape, no more room for evasion. The battle that I had tried to avoid was now thrust upon me, and with a surge of determination, I accepted the challenge. A deep resolve settled over me. If a confrontation was what fate had dealt us, then a confrontation was what I would meet head on. Damn it. Damn it. Damn it. Just my luck. Amidst the unfolding chaos, Brita's frustration seeped through her muttered curses. Her divine weapon materialized in her grip, emanating an otherworldly radiance that defied the surrounding darkness. With a swift transformation, her form was encased in a shimmering full-body armor, its brilliance akin to the gleam of a star. Her figure exuded a radiant glow, an embodiment of celestial power. I released my siblings, allowing Sidis and Enos to float to my left and right. Be careful, that attack of his is too damn fast, I cautioned. Sidis nodded, then turned his attention to Enos. Stay behind us and avoid getting too close, he advised. What? You expect me to hang back while you all face that bastard head on? Enos's immediate frown dismissed the notion. Sidis began to explain, but time was a luxury we didn't possess. Brita and I surged forward, positioning ourselves in front of the others. She conjured a radiant golden shield, and I bolstered its defenses with my mana while cosmic energy swirled around it, poised to deflect the impending assault. The onslaught came swiftly, 
an abyssal darkness resembling the gaping maw of a monstrous entity surged toward us, its malevolent aura suffocating. Rita's radiant shield strained against the force for mere moments before it dulled and crumbled, the combined mana reinforcement I used dissipating entirely. The assault pressed on, undeterred until it collided with my cosmic mana. In that instant, space itself contorted as fissures opened and closed, causing both us and the shade to be thrust backward. The two opposing forces seemed to wrestle for supremacy, and a fleeting glimmer of hope ignited within me, hope that we would survive all of this, only for it to be promptly snuffed out. Chapter 369 The Fight The middle-aged shade regarded me with a mixture of surprise and intrigue, his dark eyes narrowing as he studied his own outstretched hand. His fingers flexed, and he seemed to be probing something within himself, almost as if he could sense the cosmic mana that surged through my being. An unexpected twist. That cosmic mana, quite intriguing, he murmured, his voice carrying an unsettling blend of curiosity and amusement. Refusing to allow him any time to react, I swiftly harnessed the cosmic mana's potent force, shaping it into a powerful spell aimed directly at him. The cosmic energy responded to my command, an otherworldly torrent cascading from the farthest reaches of space toward our opponent. My disbelief, however, surged as the shade displayed an uncanny premonition of danger. With a swift and practiced motion, he summoned an encompassing shield of abyssal darkness, forming a protective barrier that cocooned him in a shroud of impenetrable shadows. The cosmic spell collided with his makeshift defense, causing a cataclysmic clash of cosmic forces and abyssal power. The collision of both energies unleashed a surge of brilliance that momentarily illuminated the void around us. In an instant, both my gathered cosmic mana and the shade's defensive shield vanished into nothingness, leaving the enigmatic figure untouched and unfazed, his form shrouded in the dark ambience. With an eerie chuckle, the humanoid shade spoke, his voice dripping with an unsettling mix of amusement and malice, interrupting a conversation is considered quite impolite, you know. Rita, her resolve unbroken took swift action. Her spear, imbued with an uncanny luminosity, soared through the air with remarkable precision, its target the shade's head. The tense silence was broken by a sudden distortion, the monster's human features grotesquely contorting as his mouth stretched open to an impossible width. The spear was devoured by the abyssal void within him, only for his mouth to return to its normal proportions, his eerie smile intact. Our breaths caught as it became clear that our adversary was unlike any foe we had encountered before. His mockery of our efforts only deepened the pit of dread in my stomach, the realization setting in that our situation was dire and seemingly insurmountable. Is that all? The shade taunted, his words dripping with arrogance. Suppressing the fear gnawing at me, I propelled myself forward, wings beating with determination as I closed the gap between us. Rita followed suit, her determination evident as she matched my pace. The Shade's amusement was palpable, his demeanor almost mocking. With calculated intent, I coated my claws with my poison element, my mind dismissing the conventional elements in favor of this unorthodox approach, as I doubted they would do the bastard any harm. I lunged forward, ready to strike. The Shade's arm rose in a deliberate gesture, an attempt to intercept my attack. I made a split-second decision, teleporting away just as his arm swung downward, reappearing behind him in a swift and precise motion. My claws found their mark, but the shade's form shimmered, revealing an illusory afterimage as he nimbly avoided my strike. Brita, undeterred, charged forth with her own assault, spear clutched tightly in her hand. Her attack was relentless, a second spear materializing in her grip as she launched herself toward the shade. Yet, despite her determination and speed, the monster remained unfaced. He moved with an uncanny swiftness, almost a blur, effortlessly evading our combined efforts with an unsettling calmness. Not bad, not bad at all. But if that's all you can, the shade's taunt abruptly halted, his words silenced as Sidus materialized from the shadows directly behind him. Even my senses failed to detect my little brother's approach until he was already upon the malevolent being. A subtle change in the shade's expression flickered, his instincts urging him to dodge. It was precisely in that moment that I seized the opportunity, unleashing another surge of cosmic mana. Sidus's form was shrouded in the swirling shadows of his own darkness magic, and the combined force of his attack and my cosmic energy cornered the shade. Forced to react, the shade erected his protective shield of abyssal darkness once more. The collision of his shield and my spell created a dazzling explosion of opposing energies, momentarily obscuring our surroundings. Amid the chaos, Sidus's strike connected with the shade, his darkness mana clashing against the abyssal power. The shade's palm met Sidus's claw in a fierce confrontation, 
sending my little brother hurtling backward through the void, before his form vanished into the security of the shadows, retreating from the fray as his presence disappeared once more. Capitalizing on the opening, Eno swooped in, unleashing his dragon breath to bathe the surroundings in brilliant light. However, the shade seemed to shrug off the attack's brilliance, his focus unwavering as he nonchalantly waved a dismissive hand. His attention was laser-focused on Breed's impending assault. Seizing the moment, I channeled my cosmic mana's manipulation to alter the trajectory of Enos's breath attack. The blazing energy teleported, emerging suddenly from the shade's blind spot. The monster's features contorted in frustration, his efforts concentrated on countering Breed's spear thrust. In the midst of his deflection, the redirected breath attack detonated upon the shade's side, triggering a dazzling explosion that momentarily concealed his form. The surprise attack sent shockwaves through his body, and for an instant, his composed demeanor faltered. Reacting swiftly, I teleported yet again, just as Brito was forced back, leaving a trailing afterimage of my form as I surged forward. With focused intent, I conjured a swirling orb of poison-imbued mana, propelling it towards the shade's imposing figure. As the venomous sphere hurtled towards its target, Sidus emerged from the shadows, deploying his own darkness magic. Sinewy tentacles materialized, snaking out to ensnare the shade's limbs, immobilizing his ability to evade. Citus's calculated move forced the shade into a direct confrontation with my toxic assault. A spark of hope flickered within me as the corrosive embrace of my poison attack enveloped the shade, its malevolent form seemingly weakened. Could this be the turning point we had desperately hoped for? Brita surged forward with her spear, channeling the divine energy within her. The weapon blazed with an aura of radiant power, and as it struck the shade, the space itself quivered under the impact. A dazzling blend of brilliant light and deep purple hues shrouded the monster, obscuring its form for precious moments. Chapter 370 Sanity Is it done? A whisper of hope escaped my lips, but it was abruptly cut short as a wave of impending danger coursed through my very being. Almost in eerie harmony, Citus's alarmed cry echoed through the air. But his warnings were futile. Time betrayed us. No. Watch out. Everything happened in but a mere moment. The shade's form which was obstructed from our view suddenly revealed itself. Gone were the monster's middle-aged human features, as it had shed whatever human semblance it once had. Instead, what emerged was a nightmarish amalgamation of obsidian flesh, writhing tentacles, and malevolent eyes. The monstrous entity retained a twisted semblance of humanity, its nightmarish shape almost humanoid, albeit contorted and deformed. Its wriggling, slimy appendages bore a multitude of eyes, with each one carrying a maddening aura. Just merely looking at them made my mind swirl and soul space shake. Seemingly furious, the shade's many eyes fixated upon its own form, as if inspecting its monstrous transformation. In an instant, one of its countless tentacles lashed out with unimaginable swiftness, aiming for Enos and trailing behind it an aura of suffocating abyssal darkness. Enos appeared to be just beyond the reach of the tentacle's attack, his instincts driving him to evade the impending strike. I immediately initiated my teleportation in a desperate attempt to whisk him to safety, but alas, my efforts were in vain. The tentacle's grasp never closed around him, yet the malevolent darkness it carried did. My heart sank and my breath stopped in a moment that felt like an eternity, right before my threat of cosmic mana could fully envelop him, right before my eyes, my brother vanished into the void. No. My mind, once a battlefield of strategy and calculation, instantly turned into a chaotic storm of raw emotion. In that harrowing moment, the tight grip I always tried to hold on my composure shattered completely, and the floodgates of instinctual fury burst open. For the first time since I arrived in this world, I completely surrendered to the primal urges that surged within me, pushing back every rational thought and drowning it out by a single, deafening command that reverberated through my mind. Kill. My body became a vessel of uncontrollable force, propelled forward as if guided by some external power. In that moment, everything around me seemed to fade into obscurity, Brita, Sidis, even the very concept of strategy vanished into the abyss. It was as if my entire being had been overtaken by an overwhelming surge of instinctual fury, drowning out all reason. Within the depths of my soul space, a tempestuous turmoil raged, the very essence of my mana churning and roiling in response to the ferocity of my rage. With a visceral intensity, I hurled myself at the abominable amalgamation of eyes and tentacles, a maelstrom of violence incarnate. I tore into its grotesque form with an abandon that defied the laws of self-preservation. Mana coated my entire body. My claws rend its flesh, 
My teeth sank deep into its obsidian exterior, and every fiber of my being was consumed by a singular, all-consuming urge. Kill. In that maddened state, the pain that should have seared through me felt distant. The sensation of scales breaking and blood flowing seemed inconsequential. My entire existence was consumed by the overwhelming instinct to obliterate the grotesque creature before me. Lightning crackled and danced around my form, an electrifying manifestation of my unyielding wrath, incessantly striking the abomination. The poison mana I wielded took on a malevolent life of its own, eagerly devouring the creature's obsidian exterior with a macabre satisfaction. Water and earth mana surged forth, their symbiotic dance further ravaging the monster's form as they complemented the poison element. Even the few little dormant darkness elements within me stirred to life, eagerly joining the onslaught, seeking every vulnerable crevice to sow chaos and destruction within the creature's body. The shade appeared utterly caught off guard by the ferocity of my relentless assault. Its attempts to summon the abyssal darkness were met with swift and unyielding opposition. My heightened senses had transformed into an otherworldly focus, as if I had entered a trance-like state. Every subtle shift in its aura, every flicker of intent, was met with an instantaneous response from my claws, teeth, and mana, swiftly annihilating its attempts to launch an offensive. The creature's tentacles, once its primary means of attack, now seemed feeble and futile against my unyielding onslaught. No matter how it contorted and writhed, its appendages found no respite, each movement met with an immediate and devastating response. My assault raged on, wounds accumulating on my body, but my concern for them was a mere whisper in the tempest of my emotions. How dare it? How dare that bastard? How dare it take my little brother, right in front of my eyes? The fury within me burned brighter, threatening to consume all reason and restraint. Rage, like a relentless storm, pounded at the fragile walls of my sanity, and I found myself increasingly unwilling to control or suppress it. Why should I? What purpose did restraint serve in the face of such an overwhelming, seething anger? Let the cosmos itself feel the tremors of my fury, for all I cared. Cosmic mana descended from the boundless void, distorting the very fabric of the universe around us. Reality itself seemed to quiver and warp, but my focus remained singular, to exact vengeance for my fallen sibling. Ether. Ether. Stop. Ether. Rita's voice echoed faintly in my mind. A mere whisper drowned amidst the tempest of emotions raging within me. But it was as if my mind had erected a barrier, a wall of unyielding anger and sorrow that shut out all else. Nothing penetrated that fortress of raw emotion except for the sight of the abomination's mangled form before me. Its multitude of tentacles thrashed in a desperate attempt to defend itself, each strike leaving fresh wounds, some perilously close to severing my limbs. Yet, the pain was irrelevant, the injuries inconsequential. Nothing mattered in the face of this all-consuming rage. Why won't you die? Die. 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 Die, you bastard. It was regenerating. Each strike I made, each wound I opened, they all swiftly closed. It felt to me as if the bastard was mocking me, mocking my attacks, mocking my rage. And so in my blind fury, I did something I would have no doubt never done if I was completely sane. I ate it. 